So this is a video I've been excited to make for quite a while now. I've seen these videos floating around on the internet of various food hacks that they use in commercials. I wanted to put some of these to the test and see if they actually work. So I'm here with my buddy, Dennis. He's gonna be taking some photos and then we've got Aaron Lugassi with the behind the scenes camera. Well, we're not gonna cook anything. We're just- Oh no, definitely not. Yeah, we, we don't know how to cook. So uh, I think the first one is pancakes. So yep. off to McDonald's. Off to McDonald's. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get it. So they say that if you put pieces of cardboard in between each layer of pancakes, you get a nice separation that looks more appealing on camera, I guess. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you use motor oil instead of maple syrup, it's supposed to not be absorbed into the pancakes and they don't get soggy. Now, I'm a little bit skeptical if this actually works, like why would motor oil not be absorbed? But then again, I'm not a scientist, so let's, uh, let's put it to the test. So these are the pancakes without the cardboard and honestly, they don't look half bad. Like those looks, looks fairly appetizing. So let's see if uh, the cardboard even makes a difference. There's definitely a difference, like a, a notable difference. And I can see why on a commercial that would look more appealing. I feel like in a photo and in video, you'll see you'll see the difference a lot more than just looking at it. All right, let's get some photos and compare it. Let's do it. How are they looking? Look. Yeah, wow. Huge difference. It's okay. very evident that the one with cardboard is more attractive. That's crazy. We purchased these pancakes at the same time, but somehow the ones with cardboard just look fluffier, more fresh. All right, now for the fun part, we've got maple syrup versus motor oil. I wouldn't recommend eating motor oil, but for the sake of television, I guess this is what people use. Here we go. So this is what our pancakes look like immediately when pouring the syrup. It looks fairly normal, like maple syrup pouring on pancakes. And this one's about 30 to 45 seconds after. You can see there's maybe a little bit of sogginess going on. It's like at the edges, it's starting to- It's spoil. starting to pool at the bottom, which I feel like is normal. Yeah. So this here is two minutes later, and you can definitely see the difference from that versus when I was pouring the 100%. syrup. All right, let's try the motor oil and see if there's any difference. Good? Yeah. <laughs> Right off the bat, the motor oil is more pale in color. It's a lot more liquidy. See how it's dripping? It's weird. The motor oil definitely doesn't absorb as much as the maple syrup, but it just gives it a soggier look because it's not as thick. Also, the lighter color is just much less attractive. Yeah, this one doesn't look as appetizing as that one at all. So you heard it here first, folks. Aunt Jemima is probably better than motor oil for these pancakes. At least this motor oil. We have to try a different motor oil That's next right. time. However, the cardboard trick does work. Yes, the cardboard trick was a big success. Yeah. Okay, so our next hack is regarding photographing soup. These are two identical cans of Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle Soup. Now what they say is if you take marbles and fill your bowl with them before you put in the soup, the marbles will hold up your vegetables and your noodles, your chicken, up at the top of the bowl while the liquid stays underneath. I think this one is sort of a no-brainer. It should work pretty well, but we're gonna put it to the test anyway and compare it to just a regular bowl of soup. So just as I expected, it's a bowl of soup where you mainly just see broth and the vegetables are kind of hidden underneath. So next we will take our marbles and start putting them into our next bowl. And now we're just going to open up our second can of soup and we're simply just going to pour it on top of the marbles. Well, this is so weird to do. All right, I think it's pretty evident that the hack works. The bowl that does not have marbles just looks like liquid with some sunken ingredients that you can barely see. And then with the marbles, we have the ingredients nicely floating on top and it looks a lot more appetizing. Our next hack is the milk versus white glue for photographing cereal. Now, when you use white glue, what they say is because it's a lot thicker, the cereal will stay on top a bit better. It won't get as soggy, but also the color of glue is a lot more of a pure white 
compared to the yellowish tint that you supposedly get from regular milk. Now, just like we did before with the soup, we have marbles in our bowl, but we've also made this cardboard cutout, which we will place on top of our marbles, and the glue will sit nicely on top of that, making the bowl less deep. Now, in order to make this a fair comparison, I think we'll add the milk to the bowl first before the cereal, in hopes that maybe the cereal will float on top of the milk to give it a fair chance. Normally, when I have cereal, which is not often nowadays, I like to add the cereal first and pour the milk on top. But for the purposes of our experiment, we're gonna do it this way. So Dennis got our photos of the milk and cereal and surprisingly the milk is very white. So I don't know how much more white the glue could possibly be, but maybe it makes for a better photo. Let's find out. All right, now Dennis is gonna go ahead and add the cereal to our glue. Now I'll give credit where credit is due. The glue obviously worked better, but I'm surprised at how well the cereal floated on the milk. So it has been 10 minutes and Dennis is taking updated photos of each cereal. The cereal's just completely sunk underneath and it's all soggy, it does not look good. So just as suspected, the winner is the glue. All right, so this next hack is a little bit interesting because it's a quick fix for making a stale coffee look more fresh. This is gonna be good for if you're doing some coffee B-roll or if you're filming a commercial that has coffee in it. These two mugs of coffee right here have both been sitting out for about 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually take a little bit of our leftover coffee and put it into a little dish or bowl that we have here. We're gonna take dish soap and add that to our coffee. We're gonna mix it up, and now we're getting lots of bubbles, and that's exactly what we want. Now we just take our spoon and we skim off some of the bubbles from the surface. We take these bubbles and we dip it into our coffee like so. And then you just start playing around with it and try and get it along the edges, make it look natural. And they say that you want your bubbles more or less on one side of the coffee because that looks more natural versus having it all the way around making a perfect ring. So I'd say that worked out pretty well. This looks like a freshly poured cup of coffee with the bubbles and then and this looks like a stale coffee that's been sitting out for about 10 minutes. Both of these are completely ice cold by now, but this one does have the effect of looking like a fresh coffee because of those bubbles. So I give the coffee hack a thumbs up. So this next hack is something that I think could be pretty popular because a lot of videographers and photographers have alcohol brands as clients. On the table here, we have two glasses of beer that are pretty much completely flat as they've just been kind of sitting out. Typically on a shoot, you will have the drink out for a long time and you will lose that head of foam. Now they say if you take table salt and add it to the beer and stir it around, that'll create new foam at the top and then it looks like you just poured a fresh glass of beer. So naturally we're gonna go ahead and put that to the test. So I will go and pour this salt directly in. And I think, uh, I think it works. We probably just need a little bit less salt than that. Just a bit. All right, so I've learned from my mistakes. We've uh, just poured a fresh glass of beer. This time I'm just going to take a pinch of salt and see if that does it. And if we need more, I'll just add more. There's a little pinch, it's starting to foam up. Maybe we could do a bit more. Maybe we'll give it a little stir. Hey, that looks pretty good. Wow. That actually worked. Not only did that give our beer a nice head of foam, but it also gives us this cool fizzing effect, like it's still carbonated and not completely flat, which is nice. So that's actually pretty interesting because I've seen the hack before where people use dish soap in the glass before they pour the beer to create longer lasting foam. But this is great for when you already have a beer poured and you don't wanna waste more beer once it goes flat. You just add salt, stir it around a little bit, and you get a nice head of foam and some carbonation. So definitely works. I'll give it the thumbs up. Okay. Okay, so we've got an update on the pancake situation. This is super interesting. In my hands over here, I've got the motor oil pancakes. Dennis has the maple syrup pancakes. It's been about two hours that they've been sitting out and Dennis's maple syrup pancakes are completely soaked. They're drenched, soggy, unusable. You can not use this for a commercial. The motor oil pancakes look great. They look bone dry. I feel like if I just mopped up the motor oil with a paper towel, they would be good as new and we could just reuse them. Yeah. which is crazy. In terms of the thickness or viscosity of the motor oil and the color, that probably comes down to just the brand of motor oil that we use. So I think what we do is if you guys are down for it, we make a part two of this video. We try this again with a different motor oil along with some other hacks because we really only scratched the surface. There's so many more to do. That being said, that is it for this video of us testing out Instagram trendy viral hacks for food photography slash commercials. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.